Hey guys, it's May May, and thank you so much for the love on the first part of this series, which is our Stash Buster series. You guys were so kind in that video, and I really appreciate it. Today, I'm going to give you three or four, I can't remember exactly how many I fit into this video, um, ideas for being prepared to give homemade gifts. So many times an occasion pops up and we don't have anything made, and as makers, that's the problem. If we have a week, we're good, but when we find out the day of or the day before, we can't always have something ready. So I'm going to show you today how to have something ready and on hand all the time. Let's start with this guy. This is a set of 12 cards and envelopes packaged, ready for you to tie a bow on, add a tag, ready to go out the door. These store in your cabinet so easy, but also they are super easy to make. So let's do it. Some of you guys are going to feel like this is my same old song and dance, but I got to tell you, the mystery card thing is the way to go. If you've never seen it, here's how it works. We're going to take two pieces of cardstock that I think would make beautiful card fronts. This is actually Simple Stories, not Mente. I know, you're shocked. What is she doing? We're going to turn this upside down and ignore the big prints on the front. I'm going to cut them down to 12 by 12, and remember, we want to do that using our um, trimmer, not going by the design strip on the cardstock because sometimes they give us more than we need. So I'm gonna cut this guy away, and that was just about perfect. But sometimes we have a little hanging off. Now, I don't wanna see the other side, okay? The only thing you might wanna do is know your orientation. So I tell you what I'll do. I'll make sure I know that this is the top. And what we're gonna do is put both of these pieces in and cut them down to four. Now we're doing four by five and a quarter. So we're gonna start at four. So there's my first cut. I do not care where they're cutting. It is a mystery to me and it is a mystery to you, right? Here's another one at four. Now what we're gonna do, I know this is the top and I know this is the bottom. A lot of you guys suggested this and I just wanna show you how this works. A lot of folks said they would like to keep the bottoms and the top and lose the middle of the paper, which makes sense. You'll see that in a second. So here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna take this guy and put it into our trimmer and trim it down to, or these guys, because I've got them stacked up four thick, I think. Put them in at five and a quarter, okay? And we're gonna slice that out. So that gets me the top section. I had too many in there for my trimmer. I know three pages is my trimmer's max, but I grabbed four for some reason. There we go. So that gets me the top. Now, because I want to use more of the bottom of the image, I'm gonna turn this guy, and I'm gonna put him on five and a quarter, and I'm gonna have the middle section cut out so I can use that middle section for something else. Oh, I got all through, through all of them. I can use this middle section for something else. It's great to put like on the front of a card like this for the sentiment to live or something like that. So we've got those to put aside. And now we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut the top at five and a quarter, just like we always do. That gives me the top section. I'm gonna take this guy and turn him around and I'm just cutting the middle section of the paper out at five and a quarter. So again, we have these guys left over, put those aside. And these are our card fronts. All right, here's the fun part. Breaking in here to ask you to hit that red subscribe button. It's free. Also hit the bell button beside it. You can help me reach my big goal this year of 400,000 subscribers. Okay, back to crafting. They are mystery cards. And what I allow myself to do is use whichever side I want. I've also told you this, for what we're doing today, this is such a good idea. Get for yourself some pre-made cards and envelopes and keep them in your stash. This saves time, but also it makes everything coordinate when you put it together. It's really pretty to do this. So I'm gonna take a card base. This is just an A2 card base that I've already folded and scored. No, folded and creased. Now I'm gonna take this piece. I can use this side or I can use this side. And I have to be honest, this is a little plain for me, so I'm gonna use the butterflies because I think they'll be gorgeous. Also, I glue these straight down. I don't pop these up. And once I get all my card fronts on, I then go back and work on my sentiments. So I'm gonna run through, and with 12 of these cards, I'm gonna glue, choose and glue my card fronts down, and then I'm gonna show you a trick for doing your sentiments. For your sentiments, I'm gonna show you how to use up some scrap. So this is a piece from my scrap bin. I don't exactly know the size. I need it to be six inches, and I'll explain it to you in just a second why. Let's see if it's six inches this way. It is. I'm gonna trim this down to six inches. Now, I'm using our stamp set called All Occasions. I wanna show you this. 
This is a key type of stamp set to have in your stash, something that has all occasions on it, okay? We have this one and two others like it. Two others, maybe one other like it, but this is the one I chose to do today. And what I did was I went through and I measured like the longest sentiment. Um, Get Well Soon was long. I also think, um, which one was it? Just a note, I gotta find it, here we go. Just a note was pretty long and I came up with two and three quarters inches. So I'm gonna make that three inches. Okay, I also want to make sure, let me show you this too before I move on. I also want to see what height I need. I decided that one inch would hold all of these sentiments no matter how I did them. So I need 12 pieces that are three by six, but let me show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take this six inch piece and cut me two strips that are three inches wide. Just like this. Again, this piece is from my scraps. You may not put as big of scraps as I do, but I keep any kind of off cuts in there. So there's my pieces. Now what I wanna do is I wanna stack these up and put them in my trimmer. I'm gonna cut them. I need to move this piece of tape. This is a reference for one of our kits we were making. I need to cut them at one inch, but I'm not gonna cut all the way through. Let me show you why. I'm gonna cut up to about here. So I just push my trimmer to about there and I leave that open. Now what I'm gonna do is move this cut line out to the one inch mark on my grid here, and I'm gonna keep making those partial cuts. Now I did not use this color for the cards I'm showing you today. I'm just using this green as a reference because I think you can see this better than the cream that I actually did use. So when I show you it in use, it'll be a different color. Okay, so one more time right through here. And I'm not paying attention to anything except here and making sure my blade is not going any further than like that mark right there. So now what I've got is these two pieces that have these partial cuts in them, right? Okay, so then what I'm going to do, this is how you mass produce. This is how I mass produce. Now we need our misty. Now if you don't have a misty, you'll just have to stamp them individually, but I just want to show you how I set this up. So I took this piece, okay, and I put it into my misty, and I was very careful because I did those cuts. I need to get it into that corner, and then I just took a magnet and laid it over here to the side like that. And you'll see when I flip this over, I just lined up my sentiments, different ones from the stamp set, just like this, because I made like four of these. So what I wanted to do was not have to take these off every single time to make four sets of cards, okay? So what you then do, I will show you how they work. Let's stamp these. So you see there, I got them stamped, super easy, right? We just did six at one time. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And now what you do is you just take like some cutter bees, cause I think they work really good for this. So I'm gonna take my cutter bees and you line that scissor up on the cut line and make a snip. That's all you do. And now your sentiments are cutting apart. Do you see how easy this is? Because the point is mass production, right? So you can have these in your stash. So you go ahead and you say, okay, I'm gonna make four sets of these cards to give away. So that's 48 cards. So then you know, you just cut enough of these for each one. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Then what you do, the next step, with your next ones, okay, you just change out your sentiments and you can just keep going. It's really cool and that's how I get these guys. All right, let's put them on the card. Something I adore about this mystery card method is that all these cards look like I have curated this set. It's two pieces of cardstock, you guys. That's all that is. And look how it looks like I painstakingly chose all these to go together. Isn't that neat? Okay, these are the sentiments I did to go with this. I did them in a cream color to kind of match the card base. And here's what I do. I take a card base, okay, like this. And then I go, okay, best wishes would be pretty on here. And I decide where I want my sentiment to live. Do I want it low inside the flower? Do I want it high up here over the flower? Do I want it in the flower all the way around? Maybe I want it centered at the top, centered at the bottom. I even did some on an angle. So you just run through and play with that. Now, the other thing I would suggest, cause I love how this looks, have a corner punch of some sort. I'm gonna use my stub and scallop and show you how this works. The stub looks really good on this set. Like if you just do two sides like that, and then you pop it up right here, let's get some foam. 
And remember, we're mass producing. So I use my Scotty. Look, something stuck to it. I use my Scotty and I cut a piece just about big enough for this guy. And it just makes life super easy. I'm not putting down, you know, 15 or 20 or even more of those little dots with all these sentiments, just one piece of foam. Then I line this up to the edge of my mat. And then I do my best to get it straight. I'm not the greatest at that. And that is a note card done. Look how good that is. Now remember, when someone needs a note card, this is perfect. They can open the inside and just write. If you want to stamp something on the inside, go right ahead. Use your Misty to help you like mass produce them. I typically don't. When I want something as a gift, I just want it to be generic enough for whoever I give it to. And these work perfect. So I'm going to run through, put our sentiments on, and we'll package this up. So I have my 12 cards made and I have my 12 envelope, envelopes with them. And the way I'm packaging these, super easy. These are the six and a half by six and a half inch self-sealing bags. We carry these in the store. We'll link all the products for you guys in the blog post of this video. Okay, so I'm gonna put these in this bag, but it's plastic and it makes noise. So we're gonna like cut that so you don't have to hear the noise. But I wanna tell you the tip first. When you're doing it, make sure you put the closure to the back. It just looks better that way. Okay, you don't want that line across your cards. So let me put these in. You could also, if you wanted to, like put a belly band around your envelopes or something. I just don't think it needs it. Now here's the other tip I wanna give you. You might not wanna close these up. We're gonna make them and store them, right? Leave your little self-closing on here. And then when it's time to give this as a gift, let's say you know who it's going to and you have some time, you could add some stamps, like maybe monograms to the envelopes or maybe some kind of stamps to the insides, whatever would be appropriate. So I wouldn't close them until I'm giving them. I would just store them in a cabinet or in a drawer or box so they don't get dusty, if that makes sense. But let's close these up. And then, uh, you know, the world is your oyster. You can decide how to decorate them. I also push them down to get the air out because they look better when the, when the bag kind of pops up like that. So look, now you can wrap ribbon around them, tie twine around them. There's room to add a pin. There's room for postage, whatever you wanted to add to these guys. And you just put these away. Now listen, you've just used, for my two sets here, I've just used four pieces of scrap 12 by 12 cardstock some scraps from my bin to make sentiments, and one stamp set. And this is two gifts ready to give last minute. So that's number one. Let's look at another one. So I have another stash buster for you. And this one is when you have some eight and a half by 11 left over from a pack, or if you have some paper that's left over, you can cut down to eight and a half by 11, and you have one of our tag sets. This is a great gift to keep on hand all the time. Now, if you're not familiar with our tag sets, let me tell you how they work. We have multiples of these. We have them in Christmas themed, everyday themed, birthday themed. We'll link these for you so you can see those. But here's how these work. I'm gonna use two pieces of paper really quick. And we designed the stamps so they fit on a certain cut and they allow you to get eight tags from one piece of paper. So you're gonna cut your paper down to four and a quarter on the long way. We're cutting it all the way down the center, okay? Four and a quarter. Then you're gonna come back and cut again at two and three fourths as many times as you can. So you'll be able to do that three times along your paper. I think I put too much in. I keep doing that. I keep adding four in there instead of three. So let me hold that one out. So we're gonna go back again and cut this three times, which will get us eight tags. Now, I love this because it's a simple, quick project, but having these on hand as giveaways, here's the thing. People always need tags, but we don't think about it. We always need something to put on our gift. You might even need these in your stash for when you're giving gifts, you know, just to have yourself some made up. And it, again, great way to use up those straggler papers that you can either cut down to eight and a half by 11 or that already are eight and a half by 11. These two papers, as a matter of fact, come from a um, Astro Brights paper and it's typically a color that I don't use a lot. So I think it works really great for this because these get left behind a lot for me. All right, let me show you a quick trick on how I do this. So this is my Joy Mat, it's sticky. You can also get the sticky mats for your um, Misties, but I'm using the Joy one. And what I do is I put this guy in the corner of my little Joy Mat marker and stick this down. And the reason is our stamp, the 
edge of the stamp really can't go right to the edge of the mist, misty. It needs to be sunk in. You can do this with your misty corners too, but this just works really easy. And then you're just gonna run through and stamp them. Now remember, I just did two pieces of paper, okay? So that gets me 16 of these tags. So it's a perfect gift for someone. So I'm gonna run through and stamp them, and then I'll show you what they look like. So through the magic of television, I did some of these already. They're not the same pages we were doing, but I wanted to show you kind of how these turn out. Look how cute they are. I just stamped them. I actually even brought in another one of my stamp sets to use some cute little sentiments with. So I've made all these guys and I alternated the colors. You see, I didn't do a good job here, but I tried to alternate the colors so they would be bright and cheery because they feel like a birthday. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these bags. Let me show you these. These are the 50 count four and three quarter by five and three quarter self-sealing bags. And like we did the cards, we're gonna add these inside of here, just like this. And again, I'm not, oh, I gotta put it at the back. I want the, the closure to the back. I'm not going to um, close this up right away. I'm gonna save this for a gift for someone. Another thing to do with these, they don't have to be the gift for someone, but they work perfect as like a basket filler. Like if you were making a gift basket or a stationary set, this is perfect for that. And then these little pins, which we're gonna link um, in the description. I find these on Amazon, these little guys. They fit in here perfect. So you add a little pin and then some twine. Now what I'm gonna do with the twine is just take some and just kind of wrap it around my fingers and just give enough twine. If you want to, you can put a whole roll of twine in. I don't really see a need for that because you don't need that much twine for these guys, but it's cute to kind of wrap some up like this and then wrap it around the middle just to make it like a little, almost like a bow. I'm gonna cut that off. And then you can kind of tuck this in you could use your bead threader if you wanted to, but you can just tuck one end in. I like to do this, let me show you. I want you to do this for the recipient. <laughs> tuck it way in and leave that piece hanging out so they can find it easy, because a lot of times it's hard to find. Then you add this guy in. You put him right beside the pin like that, and this is ready to go when you need it, but we need to decorate it. I wanna show you how we're gonna decorate these guys too. So let me show you another set. So in an effort to give you another idea about tags, we used a different stamp set that's really not for tags. This set is called Ornamental Greetings, and what Shannon did was she used the free SVG that I give you guys. She cut out uh, 33 of these. I'm gonna show you some footage here of that. She cut so for the ornament set, what we did was we put the SVG, it's a free file on my website, we'll link it below for you. We put the SVG in. I don't want this one that has the center cut out. This is if you wanna do like a shaker, they work really cute together. So what I'm gonna do is select these, ungroup them, because they're grouped together, and then I'm gonna grab this guy right here and just turn the eye off over here on the far right. I can turn this eye off and turn this eye off. That way they're still in my file, but I don't need them right now. This is the one I want, and I want to make as many as will fill an eight and a half by 11 page. So let me show you how I do that. Instead of like making an eight and a half by 11 and fitting them all in, here's what we're going to do. First thing I'm going to do is save this because I want to be able to get to this again. So I'm just going to name it Ornamental Greetings because that's the stamp set. Okay, and I'm going to say save. And now I'm gonna tell it to make it. I gotta make sure I'm on the right machine. Yes, the Maker 3 and say make it. Now here's what I love, okay? If you come over here to the left, see where this says material size? I'm using eight and a half by 11 because that's the paper I have I want to use. So I'm gonna choose eight and a half by 11. And then at the top, I'm just gonna apply, let's start with 10. I think 10 is too many, but let's see. We're gonna apply that. And you'll see that it doesn't wanna fit on there. So let's change it back and it edits. Do you see what it did? So I can get 10. I might can get more. Let's go up. Let's see if I can get 11. Change the page again. Make sure you're keeping your page right because you see what it's doing. It's changing the page. I know I cannot get 12 by looking, but that's how I do it to know how many I can get. Now, let's say I want to get 24 ornaments. Um, what I would do here so I could cut even amounts, plus I'm going to be stamping, so I don't mind having some extras. I think I would tell it I want to do 33. The reason for this is because I know then I just have to use three pieces of paper and I'll get what I want, see? So I get a full sheet, a full sheet, and a full sheet, and I'll only need three pieces to do it. So let's cut all these out. So 
she made these guys, and look, they're so cute. The front looks like this, and they're all kind of different. And you flip it over, it's got to and from on it. So these then go into one of our bags. Let me get one. So same thing, we're gonna add in our little ornaments. These are so cute too, by the way, so cute. Add in our ornaments, put in our ribbon, but on this one, we're gonna add a pin to it as well. Let me show you this, cause I don't, well, I'll leave this here and show you. I do not have any of these on hand, but this is a little pin that came in a gift set for me. But if you search on Amazon, you can find similar things to this or find pins that match the color you're doing. And this is what we're gonna do to the top. Let me show you how easy it is. So let's put this one in for the time being. I would probably put a red one or a green one in like this. And you're gonna close this guy up. Okay, so I've released the sticker, okay, the sticky part, and I'm gonna close that down. And look, I've left myself this space because we wanna add this, right? So look what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a piece that is four and three quarters. It's the width of our bag, okay? And this one is two inches because I want it to wrap around. And you just score this little guy. This is a great way to use up scraps. Look what I'm using. This is like a little piece, a little cut piece from a pack that I had. Um, and I'm gonna score this in half at two inches, okay? We're gonna fold it and then crease it. So I got this folded and creased. I'm gonna put this over the top and I'm gonna use a stapler here. So I'm gonna bring my stapler over and just staple this down. So these are little packages we used to make all the time. This has been around for a really long time, this kind of style, but I think it is so fun to give. Now watch this, super easy. This is a cut apart from a paper pack. This is actually from Salutations. It's some I had left over from Christmas. And look, I'm gonna glue this at the top and let it kind of hang over. And because it's, you know, so pretty in the back, even the part that shows through the plastic is gonna be cute. Now, you might decide if you're gonna make up these little tag sets in advance that you don't wanna necessarily decorate them yet because when it's time to decorate the package, you might wanna do something specific to who you're giving it to. But look how cute this is. Would you not love to get a gift pack with something like this in it and handmade by the person who gives it to you? I also wanna show you these I did not round or corner punch. These I did to show you a little different way to do it. So this is your second option, making little uh, tag sets. I didn't finish this one, but you do it the same way. Little tag sets that you can give to people as a gift. Love it. All right, the third option might be my favorite. Okay, you're gonna have to stick with me on this one because this one's, I think it's fabulous. Ready? Folios, these are so easy to make. Let me show you what this is. If you open this up, this is a photo folio that you can give as a gift that is a generic theme, okay? So if you have some paper packs you've purchased, no matter what the theme is, you can pre-make these and keep them in your stash to give as gifts. And look at this. These are the stickers cut apart, leftover stickers cut apart, put in this little bag, added with this guy and put in the pocket so you can give this away. Now you might be thinking, but folios are kind of personal. Not really. How many people have pictures they've taken during summer or how many have pictures they've taken um, for, I don't know, berry picking or what have you. These would work for any situation, but you're gonna have this pre-made and in your stash. Look at that. The best part, it takes three pieces of eight and a half by 11 to make this happen. Let's do it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for this folio that I'm showing you is use three different colors. The reason is I want you to really be able to follow what I'm doing, but in the one I showed you first, it's just one color of base cardstock. So you can do it either way. So we're gonna score two pieces with the same score marks, okay? Those score marks are on the 11 inch side, we're gonna score it three inches, at nine inches and nine and a quarter, okay? So we're gonna do one piece that way and then bring another one over. You can decide on your colors. Like I said, I would probably do it all one solid color, but I want you to be able to follow me and I think it's easier when you can see different colors doing their job on these folios. Now on your third piece, you're gonna score it at five and a half. It's that easy. Just score this guy at five and a half and we'll go ahead and fold him. Let's fold and crease these guys too so you can see what we're working with. So we're gonna go ahead and fold and crease every line. So here you're gonna have that one and then a thinner line right behind it. This is a gusset, we're creating a gusset. If I can get it to fold, here we go. So we're creating that gusset there. And then we're gonna do this guy here. I would say you could even just make these bases and put them into your stash 
they will store folded, you know, closed up, and then you're ready whenever you need to make an album. All you really have to do is decorate it. You're kind of creating for yourself some pre-made albums. But I still think if you have scrap paper, you can decorate them and have them sitting there to give as a gift. So we have these two pieces folded and creased the same, and then we have this one that's just folded in half. We're gonna put this one aside for now, and we're gonna work with these guys. Now, I like to show you what I'm doing, okay? So see this flap? We're gonna create this flap first. And what that means is we're gonna decide which page we want to be that flap. I'm gonna use this green one. If you're using all solid colors, you don't even have to make that decision, okay? So there it is. So since I've chosen this one to be my outside closing flap, this guy is gonna help me make the rest of the book. And here's how you do it. It's so easy. You're gonna open this up, okay? You're gonna add your adhesive to this outside flap. So outside your last score mark, you're just gonna add glue right back here, just like so. And then this guy folded is gonna get glued to that first score mark, not over it. You can't cross over your score mark because if you do, you won't get a good fold. So you're gonna glue this right to the score mark and you can test it. I'll show you what you can do. Let me get that pushed in there a little bit. You can test it by just lifting this up and as long as it clears easy, you're good. So this is the back, all right? Now let's make a pocket. So easy, guys, ready? We're gonna put glue here to the score mark and here to the score mark. Then we're gonna close this down. This becomes our outside pocket, which you saw in the first little walkthrough I showed you, okay? And then this guy can be whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be a pocket and have a simple page, you can but I really like the idea of having like a fold out like I did in that other one so you could have some room for pictures. So what I did was I glued this to here just like this. Now don't worry about it being different colors. When we decorate this, you will not even realize it. So what I did was I'm gonna take this piece and add glue to it. And again, use just use your imagination. If you want this flap to be something else, if you want it, if you want this to be wider, whatever, you can edit it. But this is the basic process for making one of these easy, quick folios. All right, so I'm gonna lay this guy in here right to the score line, not over it. And now you can see we have this piece. I think in my other one, I turned this piece backwards. So let's do it that way. So now we have this piece that opens like this and we have both sides we can decorate. We have a pocket. This guy goes here, and then of course we will add a magnet like we did on the other. Can you believe that this is this? So what I'm gonna do to show you how the three color pages work is we're gonna decorate it on camera, but we're just gonna kind of fast forward it and put it to music so you can see us decorate it. If you would like to see one of these done in a separate video in real time, let us know in the comments and we can always film it again. So let's put this guy together. So earlier when I said we, I meant me and Shannon. This is Shannon. Shannon has a beach vacation coming up. So we're gonna do this one for her beach vacation. So here we go.
Okay, guys, I want to show you how I'm putting the magnet in because we thought this was cute on the other album. Matter of fact, let me show you the other album, how it looks. I decided to put it in behind, my, uh, behind stickers. So I have a magnet behind here and a magnet behind here. And I just thought that worked really well. And I made sure it hid behind because I thought it would keep from distracting. So we're going to do the same thing on Shannon's. But we're going to use this little camper van. And what I did was I cut just this little bit off so it would hide behind this flap. Can you see how that's going to just hide? Hopefully, just hide. So we're going to put that in and hide her magnet behind it. So let's do that. I've got a magnet. I'm going to use my pokey tool to take the... Um, protective backer off the back. These already have adhesive on them. I am going to have to kind of decide where this is going to go because of my little sticker and where I want to put it. I want it to be on that orange line. So I think anywhere here-ish. You really won't see it, but just to get that down there. All right, and before we hide it, we need to put the other side on. So you had a plus and now we need a negative. And we're just going to stick it like that. Okay, then we're going to peel off its backer. And we want to square this up. Remember, you've got gussets, okay? So I want to square this up with my gusset and then close this down to pick up that other magnet. So now it does like that. We tried the smaller magnets on this one, but it really needed the bigger one to keep closed, just so you know. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add glue to the back of this sticker, just like so. i got to get all under my finger, too, because I really want it to stay down well. All right, and then I'm gonna line this guy up over the magnet. You could just put the magnet under the paper if you wanted to, but I just thought this was a cute way to hide magnets. I thought it'd be something different. I'll put that there. And I'm gonna hold this down because I want this glue to catch. And any that sticks out, go ahead and clean that up. Just let that glue catch all the way around. So now that we've got the van down, we need to cover this side. And we were looking, um, let me show you the stickers. Basically, all you need to do is find a sticker that's big enough to cover your magnet and put a little glue down. Let's see what this guy does, just to see. So cute. And it may not make any sense, but that's okay. It's just cutesy. That is cute right there. Yeah. All right, so let's do this guy. So there you go, and he'll close just like that, and I think that is super cute. All right, let me show you something else we're going to add inside. Now, the way I designed this folio, it will hold seven four-by-six photos, okay? So I'm going to use my stamp set that's called Picture Perfect. This is our collab with Genevieve. I'm gonna use this stamp set and I'm gonna use the four by six word in the place photo here and check out what we're gonna do. We're going to stamp place photo here on this guy, kind of in the middle, something like this. The thing is, this lets the recipient know where to put a photo when they get it and what this little folio album is for. And it also will hide behind their photo. So this won't show when they put their photo down, it'll be hidden. So I think this is cool because a lot of people tell me, I love those little folios, but I don't know what to do with them. Well, this is kind of like a puzzle piece. They just print out a four by six and they put it on. Now this particular album also has a spot for two landscape. So I have five portrait and two landscape. So I'm not gonna put a photo on the front, although the recipient could, no problem. You're just gonna go through and add these how you want them. Some of them I put straight up and down, some I put it on angle, some I put at the top, some at the back. I also wanna show you this. Do you see this big mark on my page right there? These were in my scrap bin, and I always go to white paper in my scrap bin first, right? So that way I don't feel like I'm wasting any of my white paper. I just go to my scrap bin first. So that one had a mark on it, so I put it in the scrap, and there it is. All right, so I'm gonna run through and put these on. So now I have all of these placed in, see that? And now we're gonna make the little slider for here. So here's the piece Shannon chose to be her little slider. And what we'll do is we'll put one of these four by six pieces on the front and the back. Now, the, another cool thing is when the recipient prints out a four by six piece and puts it on, it will hide this whole piece, this whole white piece, so it won't show. If you want some color to show out behind their picture, just cut it a little bit larger. So you cut this six and a quarter by four and a quarter, and then some of it would stick out under their photo. But I think for a gift for someone, it makes sense to them to glue a four by six on top of that. They might think they did something wrong if it was hanging over the edge, unless you showed them or what have you. But I think this is a, a perfect gift for someone, especially someone that doesn't make albums. All right, so now this little guy can go in here and look at coordinates because the colors match. Or you could flip it over, and we probably will because Shannon loves green. We'll let the green stripe show. Isn't that so cute? Look how easy this is. 
Now we're gonna add stickers for the cover and we're gonna run through and add some stickers so we'll let you watch us do that. So here's what we've done. We've added stickers for Shannon now, but we're also gonna give her the other stickers for when she gets her picture so she can keep decorating. So check this out. Here's the front. When you open it up, it looks like this. Look how cute this is. This is so cute. And again, she can add her pictures, her stickers. We love how this all turned out. It's cute. We love this. Isn't that precious? What paper pack is this? Somebody's gonna ask, aren't they? Summer Lovin' from Simple Stories. And then look. So the trick is here. We did put a sticker overlapping where the four by six goes, but we didn't press it down. So whenever she comes back to put her photo in, she can lift up this corner and slide her photo under it. You can also powder these. If you just wanna put some powder or baking soda or any kind of powder on the back to keep them from being sticky. But since it's Shannon, she knows that she can just, you know, lift that up and put the picture under it. And then we also did here. Isn't it cute? I love how these turn out. So here's one example. Our other example is here, and here's what I love. You can make these ahead of time. Put them in your stash. Look how they store, okay? Just put them into your shelf, your cupboard, whatever, into a box. When it's time to give a present to someone, just pull whatever season it is. If it's summertime, you pull a sunshine. If it's fall, you pull a fall. If it's Christmas, you pull a Christmas. You will have these ready to go, and they are great, easy, easy gifts. Honestly, these take no time to do and hardly any paper, and you can use your scraps up really well. All right, so let's see what all we've done today. Okay, so here's what we did. First, we did our note cards. Great way to use up your single sheets of 12 by 12 that are laying around. Remember, that was two sheets of 12 by 12 and some card bases and envelopes. Pretty much all that is packaged up and ready to go out the door. We have our tag sets. I only brought the Christmas ones over, but you saw us do the birthday ones too. But how great are these? This would be so cute as a favor at a party, a Christmas party, a, home, a housewarming, something like that. Maybe you do, um, I don't know, maybe you do a gift basket for someone. These are great basket fillers. Love how these turned out. And then, of course, these guys are gifts all on their own. Put this in a gift bag, wrap it up, give it to somebody based on the theme, and just pre-make them. Even if you don't pre-make them with the papers, if you just pre-make the album itself, it's so easy to make these. Honestly, we make these in seconds, don't we, Shannon? Yes. These get made so fast, especially if you're using paper packs, because you just can't go wrong. You just place the paper, and it turns out cute, okay? All right, that is the second way 
to stash bus to go into that paper you've been saving and pre-make gifts so when somebody's event is here all you do is go grab out some of your gifts put them together and you are ready to go and you're giving away homemade gifts all year long all right guys let me know what you think in the comments below which one of these do you see yourself making up to put away which one of these do you see yourself making right now? Same questions as last time, but I loved your answers. I enjoy reading them. So let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for being here for this video. Don't forget to subscribe. I got a huge goal for 2022. So if you could hit that red button, it's free. It helps me reach my big 400,000 subscriber goal. Thanks so much for being here today. And until next time, bye now.